He said, would a man put away his wife who went out being an adulteress and then let, allow her to come back? Back in them days, in the Old Testament times, if, if, if a wife was going to commit adultery, if she got out of it alive, she was lucky. Because most of the time they would just stone you to death. Or maybe you might get branded with an A on your forehead. And everybody knew that she was an adulterer for the rest of your life because you're not going to get rid of that brand, right? So it was for it was a very, you know, and it, it, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. It was a little bit different. Men, men were given a little bit more leeway. They weren't supposed to be amen, but that's just how it was. But, you know, God says here, look, it, 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 if you're a harlot and you get put away, is that man going to ask you to come back? He says, but in this verse here, he says, but I'll ask you to come back. I ask Israel to come back to me even though she played the harlot. And I ask, and Israel still refuses to let me. So I go over to bill. I give her a bill of divorcement, amen, because she wouldn't be faithful to me. So you know, in the in the we in the first the first covenant, the first marriage in, the, in there that God had was with Israel, and the second one we read in the scriptures is with the church, amen. That's us. That's that's the Jews and Gentiles both combined together, amen. But I mean, you know, that's predominantly Gentiles, because I mean, for every, for every every ten thousand Gent Gentiles, you have one Jew. I mean, it really. The Jewish people are just not very many of them are Christians, very, very few at all. But we have this new marriage covenant, I mean, the church, the church. And Israel broke that old one, and God said, fine, I'll establish a new in my church, amen. And so, we, we right now, the church is in the betrothal covenant, amen. The, our bride is gone, or, or excuse me, our bridegroom has gone up to heaven to his father to prepare us a place to stay, amen, just like in a Jewish wedding. And we're here patrolling. What are we doing? We're waiting for our bridegroom to come get us and take us back. Amen. So that's where we are. We're, we're a bride waiting on our, on our beloved. Amen. As it would say in the, in the, in the Old Testament. We're waiting on our beloved. So, uh, you know, so what, when, the, when, when, they, when, the, when the bridegroom comes and gets them, amen. Remember, I remember I said they, they get together and they get in their house for seven days. Now, if you see that symbology in the New Testament, you'll see that like through the tribulation, seven days and seven years. So we're going to be wrapped up with the church, amen, and be in heaven. And at the end of the, end of the tribulation, we're going to come back here. The new Jerusalem is going to come down, amen, out of heaven. And we're going to reign with Christ a thousand years. We see that symbology, amen. So, you know, Israel was God's betrothed, amen, in the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Because of adultery, that covenant was broken by Israel. But yet God said, repent, come back to me, amen, and I'll take you back in. That's reconciliation. I mean, we all heard of that before. You know, if you're married and you're divorced, you can be reconciled to your husband. God said, come back, I'll, I'll reconcile with you. All you got to do is repent, amen, but Israel would not listen. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. So God took a new bride, amen. And it, how many know it? And we've heard it a thousand, a thousand, ten thousand times. God hates divorce. Matter of fact, if you ever hear anything about marriage from somebody... It divorces. It's God hates divorce. God hates divorce. Amen. And I, church, I know that that's true. God does hate divorce. Amen. But but God still allows divorce. Amen. God divorced Israel. Amen. And guess what? If we don't obey God, guess what? He'll divorce us too. Amen. He will. He will. Remember it says in there that says, you know, we're grafted in. But, you know, and God can graft Jewish people back in. But if we don't stay, amen, in covenant, he'll graft us out. Amen. He will. Because why? Because that's adultery. Covenant breaking, amen. Covenant making. God does hate divorces, but He does allow divorces sometimes, amen. And, and I tell you, I, I see. I, I did this message because I, I see so many people have such grievous uh, ideals about divorce in the church, and it causes so many heartbreaks for people, amen. How many church know that sometimes, if you don't really know what you're talking about, you should just shut up. Amen. If someone has been divorced or they're going through a divorce or whatever, unless you know that you know what you're talking about, shut up. Because you're going to cause a bunch of problems. Amen. And then you're putting yourself in sin and you're going to have to repent to them people and to God too. Amen. You just, just forget about it. Just forget about it. Amen. And there's sometimes it's just not our place to say things. Amen. It's not our place. But we know, and, and, but, but well, people are just, I don't understand people are so quick to, to open their mouth about divorce. They see somebody divorce. Oh, well, you know, that person's divorced. Well, so what? That's none of your business, amen. If they have a problem, they'll go to their pastor, right? Amen. But it ain't my place to tell them. It ain't, amen. And I don't for the most part, amen. But we cause deep wounds, amen. And we, we cause problems in the church because we just, we don't think, and we think we know, but we really don't know, amen. And we open our mouth, and 
and now we've created a bunch of wounds. Amen. And sometimes them wounds are hard to heal. Amen. How many know? Sometimes you can come to somebody and say, "Forgive me," and it'll 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 smooth over. But sometimes some people are going to have a hard time forgiving you. Amen. And I'd rather not go down that road with somebody, right? Amen. I really don't want to. You know, uh, it, there's there's apostasy in the Old Testament marriages. You know, I, 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 I talked on this just a minute ago. You know, men would just, they just write a bill of divorcement. Amen. For whatever reason. It, it didn't really matter. I, I, I mean, you know, if, if, if they didn't cook the meal right, if they were too fat, or they were too skinny, or they talked back, here, here's your paper, you're done. <coughs> Amen. You're done. All right. And in the Old Testament days, women wore all their wealth and jewelry. And they never took it off. Why, why was that? Because if they got it, they never, really, they, they never knew if they was going to get a paper of divorcement. And when they did, they just, they were gone. Whatever they had on them, that's what they left with. So women wore their wealth on their body in jewelry, amen. Why? Because they had something to eat on, amen. If they didn't end up getting divorced, because it isn't like today where you could go out and reestablish yourself. If a woman, if a woman was divorced, she was in trouble, if she didn't have family that could take her back in, a mom and dad, if her mom and dad were gone or something, she was in real trouble. And then oftentimes they, they ended up prostituting herself because they didn't have no way to, to, to provide for themselves. Amen. And, and that's not right. Amen. It's, we know that's not right. That's not what God intended, right? But that's just how it was. But, you know, what, what does the scripture say? One man, one woman. Amen. Amen. It says that men to love your wife like Christ loved the church. Have you ever really thought about that? How did Christ love the church? He gave everything for the church, amen? And that's how, you know, as husbands, we need to love Christ. We need to love our wife like Christ loved the church. Amen. You know, how many knows that love does no harm, right? So if we love our wives like Christ loved the church, we don't harm our wife. We look out for our best interests of our wife, amen? And then what does it say? You know, women respect and, and obey. Yes, and it says, yes, obey your husbands. If, if your husband is really, truly saved, and your husband loves you like Christ, like, like Christ loved the church, you should obey him. Amen. Why? Because he has to give account for you. He does. <coughs> amen. If they're God's as heathens, amen, you just got to try your best. Amen. Because I mean, you know, there's a lot of churches like that, right? But there, there was, there was, a, that, was that, that was the apostasy in the Old Testament. They just would just divorce for any reason that they wanted to. But in, there is apostasy in the marriages in, 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 the new church, in the church today. Amen. And that apostasy, you see, you can't divorce no matter what. And if you do divorce, you you, you got to stay unmarried unless you go back and remarry your ex again. You ever heard somebody say that? There's a lot of Christians that believe that, amen. They, they, they think that's that's just what the scriptures say, but that's not what the scripture says, amen. It doesn't. You know, it, if you have a husband or you have a wife that will not live with you, amen, it, it, if they will not honor the marriage covenant with you, why would you think that God expects you to be with that person? Amen. You know, and Jesus made it clear. We're going to read it here in a minute. Jesus made it clear. You know, if they if they commit fornication, you're free from that marriage. You're free from that marriage. You have no obligation. Once your spouse, man or woman, commits fornication, you're free of that marriage if you so choose. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, there, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that too, that sometimes there is times when you want to stay with someone, amen, and not divorce. Amen? But there's sometimes you do want a divorce. Amen? And you can't just say, well, God hates divorce, so I can't, then people can't get divorced. No. Yes, God does hate divorce, but God himself was divorced, and there's times that God says you need to divorce. Amen? Amen? And, and we, we, we just took it, such a legalistic approach in the church about how God hates divorce, that if anybody gets divorced, they're just, they're, they're like shamed. Amen? That's not, that's not right. That's not the way God intended things. Amen? They're not tainted good because if someone gets divorced, they're not tainted goods, amen. They are saved by the blood of Jesus just like you and me and everyone else, amen. They are. Amen. And, and, and so what's, what's, what's been the result of some of this apostasy that we have in our church? Now we have the younger generations. They don't even want to get married. They're like, are you crazy? I ain't getting married. Have you ever heard that from younger people? Yeah. Amen. And that, that's because of, we went from one extreme to the other. And now the younger generations are, are saying no. Or they get they end up getting married, amen, and they don't put any, any thought into the marriage. And then three marriages later, they're like, yeah, that's never happened again. I'm never getting married again, amen. 
Amen. So you see that too. So that, that, that's the results of what we've done in our church. We haven't taught, amen, in our churches really what the Bible has to say about divorce and remarriage, amen. We just, I don't know why we, why we, we think some of the things that we do in the church, other than maybe it's the devil trying to, to cause trouble in our churches, amen. But really, you know, one attitude is no better than the other, right? They're both, they're all wrong. So what does God say about marriages, divorces, and remarriage? Amen. What exactly does He say? So we're gonna we're gonna break that down. We're going to each one. We're gonna start with marriage. Amen. We're gonna go to First Corinthians six. First Corinthians six, fifteen verse. It says, "Know ye not that your bodies are the member of Christ? Then shall I take the members of Christ and make them the members of the harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that ye which is joined to a harlot is one body?" Two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth is without his body. But he that commits fornication sinneth against his own body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. But ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so what's what's God saying here? Amen. He, he's saying that the two flesh, amen. I'm trying to use a little language with kids. Two flesh come together is, is, is marriage, amen? It's a marriage without covenant, amen? But it's still, remember marriage is two parts, covenant, and the two flesh is coming together to be one. So it's, it's a marriage by two flesh coming together, but it's a marriage without covenant, amen? How many know that really God wants us to have a marriage by covenant and by, by intercourse, amen? He wants the two. He really wants the two, right? So if, if you go out and you do the second part, you know, with different people, guess what? You, in God's eye, you just divorced your first wife and you just married the next one. And if you go on to another partner, you just divorced that person and went on to the next one. Amen. You just left a whole string of sin. And you just, it's just like a wrecking ball just comes to your life with what you've done to yourself. Amen. You put a crane with a big steel ball and you just took that right through your life. Amen. You have made a mess for yourself is what you've done. So we know that that two fleshes coming together is marriage, amen. It's, it's a non-covenant marriage, but it's marriage, amen, in God's eyes. And a lot of people, they, they don't understand that concept, but that's, that, that, yet that's marriage, but it's, it is. And it even goes deeper, amen. And both, we, actually, we know that both are important, right? Because God is a God of covenant. God loves covenants, amen. He makes covenants with us, right? I mean, we are in covenant. If you're saved, you're in covenant. You're in a marriage covenant with the Lord, right? Amen. And, and really... Really, God's divine. Remember, God has divine will. He has his permissible will. And then he has things that really ain't his will at all. But God's, God's divine will is that we have covenant first, amen, and then come together as one flesh. A lot of times that's not necessarily how it works, amen. But that's really how God wants it. And remember, in the Old Testament, marriage was... The government, amen, the government and the church was the one, there was no different, amen, it was all the same. So the, the church and the government was over marriage. And in, in today's, most most countries, they're, they're separate, right? So today, like here in the States, marriage is really split between the government and the church, amen. And it has some advantages, but it has some disadvantages too, amen. There's good and bad, it's like that with a lot of things. But we're going go to we're gonna go to divorce, amen. What does the Bible really have to say about divorce? And we're going to go to Matthew 19. Matthew 19, 2 through 9. And great multitudes followed him, that's Jesus, and he healed them there. And the Pharisees came unto him, tempting him, and said unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the twain shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Therefore let what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. So they said unto him, Why did Moses then command us, command to give a, a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of your hardness of heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I mean, in other words, from the very beginning, that's not what God wanted to, to happen. And I said unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. 
And so this, this is really, I see in the church where things, where, where, where church people really start getting hairy with their doctrines. Amen. Because you see two terms here. You see the term fornication and you see the term adultery. And you cannot, you cannot really understand what, what Christ is saying here until you learn what both of these mean. Amen. So I got my strong concordance out and I looked up fornication. And this is what it says. To literally or figuratively indulge in unlawful lust. Okay, so that means that means to if you if you if you physically engage in a sexual act or in, through your heart, you do it. Remember, Christ said either way it's just one is just as wrong and just as simple as the other. Right? What comes out of our heart is just as wrong as what comes out of our feet. Amen. Same thing. It's sin. Okay, and, and that that word is where we get the word pornography. So that's interesting, amen. But adultery is any sexual act, literally or figuratively, with anyone other than your spouse. Amen. That kind of makes sense, right? Divorce. Divorce is, is, is defined as uh, rescinding the marriage covenant uh, by, uh, by, you know, by legal means or by having relationships with someone else. That's divorce. Amen. So remember... Marriage is two parts, covenant, and then one flesh, right? So really, to understand divorce, we need to understand what fornication really means, amen? And Paul Paul goes into a little bit deeper explanation of this we see in 1 Corinthians. It helps us to a little bit understand what Christ was saying, I believe. 1 Corinthians 7, starting with verse 10. It says... And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not, not speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not, not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. So, we see here, now remember, when anytime you study something in the scripture, you've got you to look at this scripture and then find any other scriptures that deal with it. So remember that Jesus said, you can divorce in cases of fornication, amen? And so Paul says here, you know, if you have someone that will stay with you, stay with them, amen? But we, we understand from the from the Gospels that Jesus said, if you're fornication, that you're free, amen? And let me tell you something, ladies, and I'll get, I'll get you men. Amen, if you have a husband that really is not agreeable to be with you, Amen. You can't count him on be, being home at night, and you have no idea where he's at. Amen. And he don't want any physical relations with you. And you and there's red flags screaming in your ear that something's going on. There's probably something going on. And I probably I'm going to tell you something. That something going on is fornication. Amen. It's fornication. And people can tell you all they want to that oh you can't get a divorce. You can't get a divorce. Well, you, the, Jesus made it clear, if there's fornication going on, you absolutely are, are free to get a divorce, amen? You're free to get a divorce. And I don't care what they tell you, Jesus made it clear. In a case of fornication, they, they've done broke that covenant. And what are they? Really, they're dead to you. They're, they're dead. They're like they don't even exist anymore. It's like you, you're like a widower. That's how I look at it. When a person goes out and commits fornication, you're just like a widower or a widow. They don't exist no more in your mind. Amen. They don't. Amen. It's, and it's the same thing for, for men too. Amen. It's the same thing. You know, if, if you have a spouse and, and, and you're saved and they're not saved and, and they don't want nothing to do with you and they're going out all the time, you better start looking because chances are there's a man or maybe a woman. Who knows if these days ain't been. You never know anymore. Probably there's some other kind of relationship going on. Amen. That's not right. Amen. And, you know, but, but people just can't, they can't grasp this understanding that, look, if a person is not agreeable to live with you, they're going to go find someone else on the side. Right? You think that's true? I mean, if they don't want to live with you, they're going to be off doing something with somebody. 
Amen. Men and women alike, right? And, and when that happens, you're, you're not bound to that person no more. Amen. But how many know that, you know, people mess up? Amen. We, we, is anybody above reproach? Any one of us? We can, we're all capable of sin, right? So what happens if you're... What happens if your spouse sins and they say, oh, you know, I, I got to tell you something. I, I went out and I, I, had, I did something with this person, and I'm sorry. Amen. What do you need to do with it? You probably need to forgive that person. I mean, that doesn't mean there are not going to be trust issues in your relationship. Amen. But you probably need to forgive that person. And there's reasons in the scripture for that, right? Amen. But if that person, you know, it, 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 if you find out that they've been seeing someone for two years, and you just get blindsided, that marriage is over. Amen. That person has, they, 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 they're not, they have no desire to be with you. Amen. They have no desire to have a covenant with you, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're just going to go out and do their thing, and they're, it just ain't going to work. And 99% of the time, when you get in that situation, it ain't going to work. And you have no obligation to that person. Okay, but remember here, Paul says, Paul talks about, you know, he says, you know, it, 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 if you can stay with this person and you're saved and they're not, it, it's good for that person to, to stay with them. It's good for you to stay with them if they're agreeable to live with you. Amen? Because how many know you could be saved and you can have a spouse that isn't saved, but they won't cheat on you. Amen? And they'll still love you. Amen? As a spouse. When if that's the case, stay with them. Why? Because the Bible says that because you are in covenant with God, they will be saved. Amen. And your children will be saved and holy. It says right here that they will be holy. Amen. And they'll be saved. Why? Because you have a covenant with God. And through your covenant with them, they're in covenant with God. But if they leave, that protection for them is gone. Amen. If, 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 they're, if you get divorced, they don't have that covenant no more. Amen. They're not saved. But if they're with you, they're saved. Amen. And a lot of people say, oh, how can that be? How can that be? But the, the scripture says it over and over clearly in different spaces. You know, if you're saved and your spouse isn't and you can stay with them, stay with them because when they take their last breath, they'll be saved. Amen. We don't understand how or why and what God's going to go put them through to make that happen, but it says in scriptures that God will make that happen. They will be saved. Amen. You may go first and then something take place in their life after you're gone that God will make them saved. Amen. But they will be saved and your children will be saved. Why? This here, it says right here, your children will be holy. Amen. Your children will be holy. Why? Because you are in the covenant with the Lord. Amen. And they fall under your they fall under your home and they'll be under God's covenant because you're under God's covenant. Amen. Ain't that a wonderful thing? Yeah. Amen. If you think about it, it really is a wonderful thing. Now when your kids grow up and get on their own, that's a different matter. Amen. Now they're adults. They gotta make their own decision. But as long as they're under your covenant, under your roof, and you're in control of it, amen, they're under your covenant with God. Thank you, Jesus. But I, I asked I asked I've asked people this before. I said how many times does your spouse have to go out and do something with somebody before you catch AIDS? It only takes one time, right? Yes. Amen. And that's a sobering thing that we got to think about today. If you look at Africa in the 80s, spouses went out and cheated, and whole towns were wiped out by AIDS. Whole towns. And it wasn't the other spouse's fault. You had one spouse that was trying to be, you know, uh, to be a godly spouse, and you have another one that's acting like a godless heathen. They get AIDS and they bring it home to their spouse. Now they both die of AIDS, amen? So that's why I say there's times, and this is why we have the Holy Ghost, amen? There's times that you need to reconcile with, with your spouse, and there's times you need to run, amen? You need to run, amen? And, you know, I can't tell you when, when is which, and you, you can't tell me when is which, right? We have to rely on the Lord, amen? We have to rely on the Lord. You know, uh, the third thing is remarriage, amen. And you hear people say, well, you've been married, you have to stay single or marry your ex back, amen. Amen, and that's true and that's fine as long as there's no, if there's no fornication. Amen, if, if, if you get a divorce for whatever reason and your husband or your wife goes off and they stay, they, they stay single and celibate and you stay single and celibate, you have no right to get married, amen. But church, come on. Maybe if you're 70 or 80, okay, but let's be realistic, amen. If a divorce, if, if a divorce happens, people are going to go off and have relations with somebody else, amen. That's that's the reality of life, right? Amen. We know it's going to happen. We're all humans, right? 
Amen. And it, and this is what, it kind of irks me that people have some of the some of the things that they think. You know, they're like a woman will leave her husband because he he just beat her. I mean, just beat her half to death. Amen. And so she files for divorce and leaves. And then you got people in the church saying, "Well, you can't go out and get married again because you you know you filed for divorce with her." And that's not for vacation. Trust me. It, it, any person, a man or woman, amen, because believe it or not, there is women that beat their husbands. Any person that would beat their spouse is not going to have any problem cheating on you. They're not going to think twice. If the opportunity rises, at the very least, they're going to take advantage of it. If they're not actively out seeking it, right? So that's fornication. And when that happens, you have no obligation to that person. And I don't care what anybody tells you. Because I'm telling you, there's people in the churches, they're so stubborn, they'll shake their fist at you. And I'll say, well, why don't you show me in the scripture why that is? I said, if that person goes out and has a relationship, they've committed fornication. Well, well, they just can't do that. That's not what Yes, it is. That's what the Bible says. Jesus made it clear. Fornication is a deal breaker, amen, in our marriages. It's a deal breaker, amen. And when, you, when, you, when someone commits fornication, you have no obligation to that covenant, amen. You don't. You don't. All right, we're going to go to John 4. Amen. And it, 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 I have times where I really have to bite my tongue with people sometimes. I hear some of the things that come out of their mouth about other people. Right here. And I know, Lord, them people have been through, they've been through hell on earth. And these people just don't know anything what they're talking about. And they really need to just shut up. Because that marriage is none of their business. Amen. How many know that really other people's marriage is not my business? It's not. Amen. And if, if people stay together, that's their business. If they if they break up, that's their business. If they have problems, that's their business. It surely ain't my business, amen. It may be their pastor's business, but it ain't mine, amen. <coughs> if they want it to be their pastor's business, they'll make it their pastor's business. Hopefully they won't make it mine because I don't want it to be my business. <laughs> amen. I got enough problems, right? And I'm not trying to be callous, but I'm just saying, amen. You know, if, 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 if I sense something, I'm going to try to pray for them, amen. I will. If I can help my will, but but I'm not going to get involved in people's business. <laughs> I'm not going to, right? There's no sense in it. Okay, we're going to go to John 4, 16. Okay, and this, this is the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, amen. And Jesus asked her to draw some, some water for him, if you remember that story. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast... Well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that saith thou truly. Amen. So what do we see here? We see here that, because you have people that say, well, you know, that if you've been divorced and then you go and marry, you need to divorce that person and go back to your spouse. And I'm like, what? Yeah, because Jesus doesn't recognize that second marriage. Amen. But right here in the scripture, it says Jesus recognized five husbands, amen. Five covenant husbands, is worth technically. And then he recognizes a sixth husband by flesh.